It's Valentina Morales. Yes. My friend. My brother. What's happening? <laughs> Just got <laughs> off the mat. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I mean, this is like, like I was saying to you, is that this is the hardest thing. You can't lie in jiu-jitsu. This is the truth. You got to get in there and you got to prove yourself. And I'm in the parking lot today. I'm like, oh, my God, should I go in there today? Should I go in? No, no, no. <laughs> as then, real as it gets, yeah, right? Yeah, and then you just, and then you go in, and you're glad you did it, you know, because it's like uh, people talk all this shit and all this stuff, but you got to prove it in there, you know what I'm saying? And then and then you got to be responsible, too, because once they give you a belt, Alberto, you know better than anybody, once they wrap that belt around you, you feel like you have to defend it every single time. Every single time you don't want to get tied by, you know what I'm saying, or, or, or somebody. Who, Which is challenging, right? Yeah. With these young guys, they keep yeah. getting oh my God. better and working. Yeah. they're working hard. It is crazy, but, but they try to kill you every single time. Every single time. And this is, what the, this is why this is so much better. I mean, all the martial arts is good because when you mix it, you know what I'm saying? But this is like... Cause this is like you almost defending your life every mm. time, you know what I'm saying? And it's just like sometimes your shoulders, your elbows, your neck is fucked up, your knees, you just your like, ankles, right? Your ankle. <laughs> you remember that? I mean, you, you remember that day? Yeah. You just heard I was wrestling, <laughs> and the guy just popped my ankle, and you heard it, it was like a big pop. Wow! I was like, oh shit! And then you, you know, you, you got to push yourself, and you got to. Keep going. Yeah, you your, keep going. and your daughter Valentina, our, yeah. like our youngest or, orange oh, yeah. belt ever. The she yeah, she's twelve years old, the youngest orange belt ever. He, you Here know, at Legacy, yeah. And she's been coming here since she was four. Yeah, and uh, and she loves it. This is her life, you know. But it, it, especially for I, I, you know, I recommend to everybody, bring your kids to jujitsu, not just not just because of the jujitsu, just the discipline, respect, and it teaches you. Everything in life, you compare it to jujitsu. Everything, you know, you compare. A, 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 you know, you you want to grow up and and be a better person, and then and then when you know this, you know you're not gonna get into a fight out there. You mm -hmm. know, you got nothing to prove to anybody. You you know, you just like okay, whatever. But you got nothing to prove. You feel confidence in yourself. You know, it just keeps and it keeps kids out of trouble. You know, yeah. in the long run. Keeps you humble, makes yeah. you a better person, oh, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. How'd you get into jiu-jitsu? What made you want to do it? Well, you know, I was a bouncer in New York City, and uh, I was a Golden Glove boxer. I competed in the Golden Gloves, and I, um, and we were always fighting. I was fighting. Every night there was a fight, and it was more like, you know, punching and, and, and this and that. But if I knew this back then, that. This is, you know, it would have been night and day. Mm. You would have never had to throw off, you know, you would have just grabbed somebody, submit them, or, or just hold them yeah. and bring them outside. But you had to fight, you had to fuck people up, punch them in the, you know, all this stuff, and then and then you got to worry about the consequences later on. Because if you hit a, you know, New York City, I bounced out the tunnel, Mars, Palladium, Limelight, uh, Webster Hall, and... Um, you fuck somebody up, the wrong person. You all know the, they, all the big nightclubs, right? Yeah, yeah. oh yeah, all the biggest nightclub in the biggest nightclub in New York City at that time. And um, so the the rope the the ropes TV show, right? That you that yeah. you had, the, on yeah. the, it's on Netflix, right? It's uh, yeah, it was the highest rated original series on Netflix. Now it's on uh, on Amazon. It was the ropes. It's called the ropes. The ropes because of the when we used to bounce. We used to put a row, a red rope, velvet rope, right around outside the club, and you couldn't cross that rope unless you know one of the bouncers or the door person opens yeah, it up. Yeah, opens <laughs> it up. But but to us, that was very personal. That rope, mm. you know, if you touch that rope, you you know, it, you know what I'm saying. This, mm. this something's gonna happen. You can never touch that rope. You could yell and say, you know, you can't come in, and then they start yelling at you. Oh, you're there, you motherfucker. You know, yeah, all this stuff. But once you touch that rope, then it's on. You know, then it's a different story. But uh, so we did a, a um, we sat down with the writers and uh, and uh, we came up, me, Vin, 
Vin Diesel mm. and his sister Samantha Vincent. We came up with the ropes, and uh, we said, you know, I sat down with the writers and I told them every episode, every episode, this is what happened. This is there. This is what they stories did. from all your the days, stories and stuff like that. And me and Vin, me, you know, me and Vin grew up bouncing mm. New York City since we were like 17 years old. You know what I'm saying? We will go out and audition during the week, act in audition and stuff like that. And then we will bounce on the weekend. And that's the only money we had. And um, so we made the ropes. Uh, it's on Amazon right now. And uh, and it's doing very very well, you know. They they still talking about doing another another season now with uh, HBO and stuff like that. But we'll see. Yeah. You know, we'll see what happens. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. You got to do that that the show. And oh yeah. Tell a little bit of history, right? Oh yeah, that was amazing, and it was incredible because you know you just think back, you know, every episode it meant something to you. Every episode, you know, it was real. This was real. This was real life. Me and Vin growing up, bouncing, acting on the side, struggling, no, f no, mm. no money, mm. no car, zero. I lived in a fucking in, a, in an apartment, eight by eight, where I have to, where, where, when if I had to go to the bathroom, I had to go outside down the hall and share it with the whole floor. And there was ten of us, me, my brother, all of us, and uh, and we where, where'd made, you grow up? Well, I grew up in New York City. Where what, what part? In Manhattan, Manhattan. uptown, okay, yeah, okay. Washington Heights. I grew. I also grew up. Lived in the Dominican Republic when I was little. Came. Uh, I was born in. I was born in, in New York City. Mm. Went went back to the Dominican Republic when I was like two, to like I was like ten, twelve. Came back to New York City, and then uh, and then that's when the struggle really began. You know what I'm saying? I grew up in a group home, group home, foster homes. They sent me upstate to a group home and stuff like that. And where was uh, your mom and your dad? They were, uh, I, you know, I never met my father. Yeah, I grew up without a father. Never met my father, but uh, my mother, my mother um, is Dominican. She brought us back to the Dominican Republic when we were born here, and then, uh, and then, you know, she struggled. Four kids on her own in a third world country, no money, no work, and stuff like that. We lived in a shack, bro. I used to carry water. Two miles like this, um, you know what I'm saying? No food for days. Walk around in my underwear, asking people, oh, "Can I have five cents, please? What can I, you know, clean your windshield and stuff like?" You know, you see those poor kids in yeah. other country. That was me. So you know, then then um, my mother sent me and my older brother when we were like 12, 13 to New York City. He's with one of her boyfriend that she met, and we were staying there with him in this apartment uptown, and then. Um, and then he leaves one day and never comes back. And me and my brother were like sitting there in this, in this little apartment and the guy never come, comes back and we were like, what do we do now? There was no food, no more, nothing, zero, zero. We didn't even speak English. Yeah, so. Uh, how old are you? I'm right at now. That, at, the, at the time. Uh, right, uh, we were like 13, 14, 13, yeah, 12, 13. 14, damn. And then, um, and then thank God, one of the neighbors saw these two little kids and then they called the city. They came, picked us up, and then that's when we started going to correction facility, group homes, foster homes, and stuff like that. And, uh, but anyway, the, 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 the story about that, that he leaves, right? We don't know what happened to him. He never comes back. We were there for like weeks by ourselves. And about 10 years after that, yeah, about eight years after that, when my mother finally makes it to the United States and we were in a group home upstate New York, she comes to visit us. And then um, and then we ask her, we're like, what happened to, we never saw him again. He never came back. And that's what she told her, he was a drug dealer. And then he went and he got shot that night. He wow. got shot and he never came, and he, you know, they yeah. killed him. And then we'll put, we didn't know, you know? So we were like, wow, this is crazy. But uh, went went to a school upstate New York, and uh, Nanuet High School, and then um, damn that's I crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 12, 13, 14. Yeah, like yeah, it's crazy. Group home, four home, for uh, you know, they made it back to New York City after the group home started bouncing on my own, and started you know then that's that's when I met Vin, and me and Vin were like, uh, let's you know he was like Val, you got to do acting, you got to do acting. We were taking acting classes. We would go to um, 
auditions during mm. the week. And then we would bounce on the board. 17 years old, bro. We were babies. And then um, and then he just finally said one day, look, Val, we're not going to get any work. I, we got to do our own shit. We have to do our own shit. And he started writing his own stuff. And then we started, you know, he started doing his own stuff. He made uh, multifacial. Mm. Then uh, Strays, with, uh, with me and him, started me and him and Strays. And then we went to the... Sundance Film Festival with that with Robert Redford in '97, and then uh, and then he started making it. After that, he comes to LA, and then he calls me right away. He's like, "Val, I need you out here. I need you here. You know, I'm, you know, I need you. Come out here." And I was like, "I like, you know, I can't go over there right now. I just met this girl. I just got her pregnant. We're gonna have a baby and stuff like that." He's like, "You got to come out here. Bring the whole family. Bring everybody." So I, you know, I, it was a big move for me. I never been out of New York City, so I we, we I came, and uh, and then the rest was history. You know, Fast and the Furious, everything else. So he was blowing up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember when uh, when Triple X came out when when we did Triple X. What was, it, what was his like his breakthrough? I mean, I just He's, remember him from the what was the. The 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 war, World War Two movie, uh, yeah, uh, Saving, Private Saving Ryan. Private Ryan, yeah, yeah, yeah with uh, with uh, Steven Spielberg, uh, his breakthrough was when when he, Steven saw him in a video that we did. He did a multifacial. It was a short film about 15, 20 minutes, and Steven Spielberg saw him in that. Uh, Saving Private Ryan was done. They were mm. already filming. Yeah, and Steven Spielberg saw him and loved him so much. He's like. I'm gonna write a role for you in this in this film, and put him in there, and then that was his you know breakdown, and and then he just blew up from there you know. But uh, but yeah, it was a lot of you know people don't get it. So it's, it's just the struggle was real, you know. It was a lot of struggling. Vin, you know, Vin had no money, mm. zero zero money. Mm. At one point, he he slept in my house. He was sleeping in my couch for like a year. In New York City, you know, and uh, and then put. You know, How'd so you guys get it together? You guys are. So your mom came back, yeah. from from Dominican. Yeah, Republic. she found out you guys were by yourselves. Yeah, and, she came well, back. not by yourselves. You were in foster homes. Yeah, and yeah. She came back, and then um, and then uh, after you're 18, 17, 18, they you know they kick you out of the group home. You know, you got to go on your own, and then that's when um, I went back to New York City, stayed with my mother. Mm. And uh, and then she went back to the Dominican Republic. Then I was on my own again, and um, with my older brothers came and uh, and we were living in a in a, in a eight by ten apartment, ten of us, with the bathroom down the hall, no food. If I didn't bounce and make seventy five dollars that night, I couldn't eat tomorrow. You know and. Uh, that's and, crazy. Yeah, and then, and Vin was the same way. And Vin, Vin, that's why we we like connected. So you know what I'm saying? Because he, you know, we kind of like when the kind of we're dealing with the same issues with the you know with with family and 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 life and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, so you have such a big heart. You're so generous. Where, like, yeah. where does that come from? Yeah, it just it's just the way I grew up. You know, I don't take anything for granted. You know what I'm saying? And um. You know, when you grow up, like like you've been to Brazil, you know, you see those little kids like that, and eighty percent, ninety percent of the people in Brazil are, are poor, but dirt poor. Like in the favela, I've been to Brazil. I was in the favela. I f when I went there, mm. I felt at home. It brought back a lot of memories because mm. that's the way I grew up. You know, when you have no father, and you and your mother's not around, you, you know you you know what I'm saying. And people people take advantage of you too. As a little kid, you get abused. You get molested, you get beaten, you know what I'm saying? But it was a struggle, man. But um, my mother finally made it. She tried to take us out of the group home. We were 18, and uh, my my older brother was lucky enough. He got uh, adopted, and um, and then me, I had to go back to New York City and get a job. And so, and, you know, and then me and Vin came acro across each other, and, and that was uh, a blessing. Mm -hmm. It was a blessing, you know, it was a blessing. And we kind of, like... Cause you know, we're brothers. Cause you know, you could, you know, you could have brothers, but you can't really like choose, you know, who's gonna be your real brother in life. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, you know, we were fighting and we were depending on each other to eat, 
mm. each other have each other's back mm. and 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 then he he made it and he got he came and got me out of the out of the That's ghetto cool. cool yeah he made it he, the first thing he did is like wow let's go and then you know i came here i started doing my acting my stuff like that and uh and then uh, and then he put me down as a producer on fast and the furious but he's, yeah, I started like doing movies, right? And you yeah. started, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we started doing movies. We started doing, um, he just, you know, I was just with him 24-7. We wouldn't, it's crazy. Know. Fast and Furious is crazy. Like, I've grown up with it, you know. It's like, just insane. And they keep coming out with him. It's them. crazy. But Alberto, from nothing, <laughs> from scratch, it wasn't a book. Right. It wasn't like uh, anything. It's just from scratch. Out of nowhere. But this could have been dead from the first one. Yeah. But you know, at, with Vin and Paul, they switched the. Was it the second one? They switched. They took. Uh, yeah, Vin the Diesel second out. one. Yeah, they took. But no, no. But Vin turned down the second one. I see. I see. They gave him twenty. He didn't want to do it. He turned it down. He didn't like the script, because at, you know, Vin back then he he chose. It wasn't about the money for him. It was never about the money. You know, twenty million to a poor kid. Who the fuck is going to turn that down? Yeah. Nobody in the world. He turned it down. I'm not going to do that. I don't like the script. I don't like the story. You know, and then... Um, That's interesting, though, that it didn't work without him, right? Yeah, it didn't work. I mean, if, uh, uh, it was uh, Too Fast, Too Furious. It was okay, but it wasn't the best. And then they did Tokyo Drift. And again, they offered him money, ton, a lot of money, $30 million. He turned it down. He said, no, I don't like the script again. I don't want to do it. They did it. They did uh, Tokyo Drift, mm. and it was going straight to video. It was going straight to video. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it was going straight to video. And one of the producers, Neil Moritz, came up to the house and was talking to Vin, and Vin was like, um, Vin, you know, we need this. We need you. Can you do this and stuff like that? Because they tested it. You know, they tested Tokyo, and it, and it bombed mm. straight to video. So he calls me up to the house one day. I'm working. I'm at the gym. He calls me up to the house. He's like, "Wow, come up here." I go up there, and uh, I I walk in. I see all these people there with suits and shit like that. I'm in my you know t-shirt and, and sweats. I said, "Yeah, yo, what's up?" He said, "Wow, uh, what do you think?" So he hasn't talked to me about this or, or not. I have. I, I didn't even hear about any of this from anybody else. What do you think about should I do should I do an they want me to do an appearance in Tokyo Drift? I said, well, why? What's going on? Well, they want me to do it. I said, but when? Like at the end of the month, when is it? Because it matters. Mm. When? Well, like, well, they want me to do an appearance at the end of the movie. Like almost at the end. And then uh and they're gonna give me, you know, whatever, a couple of million dollars just to show up and at the, just to show up here in LA and um, and and work for like a couple of hours. And he still, he was like, but I don't know, you know, I don't, I, he, he, it didn't matter. He doesn't give a shit about the money. He was saying, what do you think? But forget about the money, but what do you think should I? Well, obviously if they're asking you, is the movie done? Yeah, the movie's complete. They tested it, yeah. Obviously if they're asking you, it's because it's not, it's not good. Mm. And if it's at the end of you, it sets it up for you for the next, you know, for the mm. next, uh, for four and stuff like that. You know, obviously they need you. And, you know, and um, he goes, what do you think? I go, yeah, I think you should do it. Fuck yeah. You know, and um, and then he turns around to the to the people on the, in, in the office, all the people that see this, why I have him? Because he's, he's not talking to me about the money he's not talking to me about anything he's just you know he's telling this is why he's telling me the truth i trust him and i believe in what he tells me and and i said why what are they saying they all everybody told him no mm. everybody in that room told him not to do it because they didn't give a shit about him they didn't give a shit about his career all they gave a shit about was about the money like what? Well, well, you only you, they're only gonna give you two million dollars. That's for you. We're not gonna make any money, and you know. And what about this and that? We already, you know what I'm saying? I said, yeah, you should do it because it sets it up for the next one. Obviously, they need you. They want you. They are asking for you. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, and you know, and he told all of them, all those you know the people with the suits and and big producers and stuff like that. 
This is why I have Valentino, because he's telling me the truth. They, Valentino, they all, every single one of them told me not to do it because they're not going to get paid. They're not, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, we drove to, um, me and him, two o'clock, we drove to this parking lot in LA. They set it up to make it look like Tokyo, you know, like, like Japan. We went in there, he pulled up in the car. At the end, you know, he pulls up in the car with the song, oh, Los Bandoleros by Don Omar. And um, we were there for like two, three hours and we were done. And he sets up the whole, that's when everything started. That's why we up to oh, t- nine. They're talking about we're gonna do ten too. That's crazy. Yeah, it's insane. That's crazy. Over like a, is it? It's more than a decade, right? Yeah. How many oh, yeah, years? Yeah, yeah, no, we started in 2000. 2000, 20 years. Two thousand. That's when years. I first came here. It's crazy. It's Twenty when, years. And then when they and, and then when they tested it again, <laughs> they tested it at the beginning. Bomb. They tested it again with Vin. For one, he was in there for thirty seconds at the end. Everybody started clapping. They got mm. up and they started. Oh wow! Mm. It blew up. And then that's when you they know knew, they yeah, knew of the course. formula. Yeah, it's his Vin, it's Vin and Paul Walker. You know, yeah, what I'm Paul Walker. Because they were like brothers. They were like you know real, and that chemistry was there. Chemistry. I always told Paul. I always told Vin. I said that chemistry between you and Paul, and Michelle Rodriguez is incredible. It's the formula right there. You can't lose with you guys, you know. And then the Fast nine, Family. Nine fucking every yeah, t- every crazy. movie, every movie is. Eight hundred million dollars, almost a billion dollars for each one. After that, it's crazy, you know. Worldwide, it's the biggest thing in the world. They yeah. they they doing a, um, they did the worldwide, uh, yeah, Brazil, like all yeah, over the world. Brazil, it's we went so all over big. The world. London, yeah. we went London, Brazil, uh, Tokyo, Japan, China, I mean everywhere. Yeah, you know. So, and now they doing um, now they doing the other ones, the the with uh, Dwayne Johnson and uh, and. Uh, the spinoff, and right? Jason uh, Hobbs yeah. and uh, yeah, Hobbs, which is great uh, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, but they, but they want. They always talked a couple. It's been a couple of years. They were talking about the the spinoff with yeah. them and Michelle and Therese. Yeah, Michelle and Therese still want to. You know, they want to be. They want to stick with Vin and do and do. It's so know. crazy though, just how big the thing has gotten. You know, the, the oh. Rock comes in, it just gets bigger and bigger yeah, and bigger. You think yeah, it's, yeah. it's already bigger than yeah. life, but then it just keeps getting bigger no, and bigger. No, no, You're like yeah. what? <laughs> yeah, for it's insane. Crazy, crazy, it's crazy. crazy. And then nine we, and ten. Yeah, was it when was it seven for the seven when Paul Walker passed? When Paul Walker, yeah, yeah, we were in uh, and uh, and uh, we were in uh, Atlanta. We were in Atlanta filming. Vin got a uh, Paul a birthday cake and other stuff, and it was just like, you know, a couple of weeks. We coming home for th- we come we coming home for Thanksgiving. Mm. Me and Paul went the same flight. We flew to LA. We got to film on Monday again. So we were, we had to be at the airport. He said, Paul, he said, Val, I see you at the airport on Sunday. We're flying back because mm. we're working on Monday. And then uh, Sunday. I get a call from his brother, one of his best friends, and uh, he said, uh, and I hear somebody screaming and stuff like that. And the background said, uh, I said, what's going on, bro? Everything okay? And then um, that's when he said, Paul just died. And I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I could, my mind was just like, I was in, uh, I was at that Ralph with, with Valentina. Mm. And I was like, what? Paul just died in a car accident. You got to call Vink. Where's Vink? And stuff like that. And then it just, like, it, it wasn't even sinking into my head. It, it was just like, and my head is spinning. So I had to leave. I said, Valentina, come here. I, we walked outside, walked into the car. I sat in the car. <clears throat> and I said, yeah, he died in a car accident. His car, he got on fire. He's dead. While he was screaming, crying, he's dead, dead. And uh, and this is his best friend. And uh, and, I, and I said, okay, let me call Vin. And I call Vin. And I guess people were calling him because you know it, it, he picks up right away. And I said uh, he was very quiet. And I said, uh, did you? You know, I, I mean, I didn't even know how to tell this guy that. You know, that's his brother. I just got a call, Paul just died in a car accident. 
and I, you know, I, mean, I was crying in the car like a baby, and he just, I just heard silence on the other line, silence for like 30 seconds, just like this. And then he gets back on the phone. Let me call you back. And then, and then he hanged. It was just, it was just like, yeah, it's yeah, crazy. Yeah, it was the craziest. I mean, you work with this guy for so long. Take it for granted, yeah, right? Like man. one day to the next, everything can change. It's just crazy. We were doing you, and he loved jujitsu. Mm. He loved Brazilian jujitsu. We went to Puerto Rico. We were rolling all the time, training. Val, come up to the room. He had mats on the floor. We would roll, roll. We had mats in uh, Vince got a gym, and we put mats on it, and we would roll every day for at, at lunchtime. Me and Paul, rolling, rolling, rolling. Wow, wow. He just loved it, you know. And uh, but yeah, you guys pause, pause on the filming, right, for a while. Yeah, yeah. We stopped filming. And we shut down everything, everything, because we didn't know. You're mid sh mid shoot, pretty much, right? Well, no, we were almost done. Almost done. Wow. Yeah, we were almost done, and then um. And then it was just like they shut down for like two, three months, four months. You know, it was just yeah, everybody was in do. shock. Yeah, and then um, and then we we thank God we got you know we used his two brothers, his two younger brothers. We used him you know to finish the movie because mm. you know at the end at the end of the day Vin oh Vin wanted to finish a movie for for Paul. We're like okay, we owe this to Paul. We gotta finish this for him and and you know and we gotta you know we gotta go on you know but uh but it was hard for everybody especially for vin you know i mean that's his yeah you know that was his 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 brother on screen he's you know and they and you know there were brothers there and in real life you know what i'm saying I think like us it's kind of well not professionally is it done like that yeah. but it's, in real yeah. life it's you're well, like yeah, man yeah, I, yeah, my, my yeah. brother's gone his brother was gone. He didn't want to do it. He didn't want to do fast anymore. Yeah. You know, he was just like, and, he, and I see it in his eye every time I saw him after that. He was never the same. On set, mm -hmm. if it, it just felt empty, you know, like being on set without Paul, you know, because he was just so like, and you could just see it in Vince's eyes. Like, you know, you could look in his eyes, see that there was something missing. It was empty. It was just like, yeah. you know, but, uh, yeah, it was, everybody went through a hard time, you know, but. Uh, you invited me, like, uh, on set a few times, and, like, yeah. it's amazing, like, the, the chemistry yeah. and the family, like, it's really, like, a, oh, yeah. it's a family, it's, like, legit, like, a real, you know, no, like, really. It was fun, because. Your house, too, yeah. you know, and everybody comes by, and. You came to Vince's house, you came with your family, we brought you to the, you know, he invited you, you came to the set, mm -hmm. you saw Vin, put everybody working. And just the, the, all the guys on. The, the chemistry, you know, but yeah. it was fun. Yeah. It was one of those jobs that you look for, you know, most people, they don't, they're like, oh, fuck, I gotta go to work today. You know what I'm saying? We were like, yes, I can't, you know what I'm saying? Cause it was fun. It was all of us there, was having fun. We would work out, we would eat together. Yeah. Sit down, eat together, go out at night. Yeah. On the weekend, we were, you know, go to a restaurant. Every birthday party, every party, yeah. we celebrated together. We go to Tyrese, we go to Paul come over, Vin have Vin will always have everybody together, you know. It's like a real he. Yeah, yeah. He made it, he built it into a real family, and that's why the movie worked too, yeah. because it all relates to that the chemistry, and you could tell us you could tell it's real. Yeah, it was surreal when uh, yeah when I went to Tyrese's uh, his daughter's daughter's birthday. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 The, at the Universal Studios, yes. and uh, we went on the ride. Yeah, you guys want to go on the ride? Okay, I was with my kids, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And everybody, yeah. And, and it was them in the in the front of the in the front of, yeah. the, of the whatever trolley oh, the bus, trolley, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, it was their ride too. You yeah. know, Tyrese and Vin Diesel, yeah, 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 and I'm yeah. like. Looking yeah. my my kids have no idea they're just like you know enjoying it you know yeah and I'm like this is crazy I'm yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm on the ride with Vin Diesel and Tyrese it's, it's crazy <laughs> it's insane and we went and we and we because we went and we did he had to do the shoot yeah for the ride yeah and he That's was crazy. just you know every, you know about every time Vin used to tell me wow I mean can you believe we're here can you believe we're here. Can you believe this is us right here? You know, it, 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 
it's still because he's just you know he he will always say yeah. I'm just a poor kid from New York, and then it started hitting. He really meant that when he said that. He meant it. Like you see this guy, he's wearing shorts, fucking, you know, t-shirt and stuff like that. I gave him one of your t-shirts. He loves wearing a Berto Crane, the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu from here. The, you see him in yeah, every crazy. picture. Yeah. He wears that shirt almost every single day. Every He loves that shirt. He tells the people that when you watch, you make sure you, this is my favorite. He doesn't go anywhere without the, that, 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 that green t-shirt, you know? And, but you see him, he wears no jewelry. Yeah, yeah. He wears no watch. He wears, you know, he... When he, when he was here for like two weeks at, at Legacy, you know, when you they were filming the, practicing the, the yeah. fight scene, the final yeah, fight yeah, scene, yeah, you yeah. know, that the stuntmen were practicing yeah. and he came in and I was like, you know, because you don't know how they, uh, you know, yeah. the guys are, but the way he treated everybody, yeah. the way he spoke to the well, yeah. stunt, yeah. just there was like a yeah. respect and humility yeah. about yes. him, you know, yeah. and very, a strength too, like, yeah. you know, but very humble. Humi humility and, and, and I was like, guys, oh, he's, he's yeah. legit, you know, he's yeah, a great no, guy, you know. He's legit, he's yeah. legit. You know, and, and he, motivating, like his, he was motivating them motivating. all the, like a, like what a leader does, yeah. right? Yeah. He talks to all the kids. He tries to, you know, motivate kids all, all over the world. Yeah. He goes to the Dominican Republic, goes to the ghetto, yeah, you know, talks to yeah. the kids. He spoke and, to our kids down the legacy. Okay, that, yeah, yeah. You know, he didn't have to do that, Nothing, you know, but he you went know, and yeah. he's like, you know, this is the most important class yeah. that you can do in your life because it's going to prepare you for everything. Yeah, for everything. I wish yeah. my, my parents had put me into yeah, something yeah, like this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we were coming here. We we came here to Legacy. We were training with uh, um, Vin Diesel and uh, um, what was the uh, who else came with us? Uh, a couple of the big actors. J right? Jason Statham Jason, came, right? Yeah, Jason yeah, Statham and other stuff. And we were here for two yeah, weeks. We were yeah. coming here for two weeks every single yeah, day. Yeah, it was crazy. And he, you know, all he, the moms he, were like, "Is that?" And, and nobody asked, them, nobody bothered, right? No, everybody was, respected. Like it the, was beautiful. <laughs> it was it crazy. Was, like, was, he is he that it, Vin yeah. Diesel that just went to the bathroom? Yeah. <laughs> he loved it. He's yeah. like, "Wow, this is That's the best crazy. gym I ever, uh, This is yeah. the best gym in the world. I love coming there." And he practiced jujitsu. You know, he's got his blue belt, and um. And you know he loves jujitsu. You know what I'm saying? He loves it. And uh, but uh, yeah, he's uh, he's very humble. Yeah. Very down to earth. Very humble. And he'll talk to you like you know, like you're a human being. Like, yeah. Yeah. And then he'll tell you. you can relate. He's like, yeah. don't treat me like I'm better. I'm not better than you. Yeah. And you feel that that yeah, energy. Yeah. You feel it. Yeah. You know he's very. He lifted real. everybody up in the room. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's um not acting like he's better than no, anybody, you know. No, no, he never act everywhere we went, you see him wearing short jeans or t shirt, he walk in. If he has to wait online, he'll wait online anywhere. That's crazy, you know. He was the big, biggest movie star in the world. Biggest movie <laughs> you know? star, yeah, it's crazy. We when you know, when we did when we did triple that's this is when we started realizing it. That's crazy. When we did triple X and then we saw we he you know, I went to his house and then we I said, Val, let's go for a ride. And he, we drove to Sunset. It was this huge wall. And all it was is triple X. Vin Diesel triple X. And he, we stood on the, on, the, on, the side, on the sidewalk. And he goes, look at that, Val. Look at that. Can you believe that? Can you believe this is, oh, this, this is, can you believe this? I mean, he was just like a little kid. And, you know, just like, wow. He was in shock. You know, but... Um, yeah, he's very humble, down to earth. You know, he train he he keeps. You see his body. Yeah. And, you know, he keeps healthy. He trains every day. Trains jujitsu. He was a great boxer. He was an incredible boxer. You know, and um, you know, but yeah, going going back to like, so you got into, you know, you saw you did boxing, but how did you? What was the what was the how did you get into jujitsu? I got into jiu-jitsu when I first came here. What was, this, what was the step, you know? Yeah. When I first came here, and uh, Rico Rodriguez and Mark Kerr were friends with Vin. Mm. And then I met them and through Vin. And um, and and then Vin started doing Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And I was like, what the hell is this? You know what I'm saying? I was like, wow, this is fucking looks, this is incredible. You know, because I'm always a stand-up fighter. You know, I was, you know... And um, and then I somebody yeah. tap you out. Yeah, Is that no, no. Felt? Then I saw him. I saw them doing it on the floor, and I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" Yeah. <laughs> These guys got the legs yeah. around each other. And then Rico was like doing this to to Vin, and 
and Mark and them were going at it. I was like, holy shit, this is incredible. Mm. I want to learn this. I want to learn. And then I started doing it with Rico. Did you then, watch Hoist Gracie? Have you had you have and have you I, seen? And then I saw Hoist Gracie. Mm. Was just like this guy came out of nowhere, out of just killing everybody, and he was upside down, and I couldn't see. Nobody could see what was going on, and I was like. And then also like you hear the guy crying, ah, stop, you know, tapping out. I'm like, what the fuck did he do? What's yeah. going on here? Yeah, yeah. It was just like <laughs> the triangle choke. Yeah, right? yeah, I was yeah. like, what the fuck is happening here? And he did it to everybody. He was killing everybody. And but he proved it. You know what I'm saying? He proved it that yeah, it works. This shit works. This is this works. This beats almost any other martial arts out there. And and I was like, I want to learn that. And then I started doing it with Rico. And then Rico went back to, to Vegas uh, to train with uh, for his uh, for the UFC heavyweight champ of the world, which he fought uh, Randy, Randy Couture. Couture yeah. And then I started going to a class with uh, Fabiano Ija. You know, he was another another right, UFC right. champ, Fabiano Ija. And then, uh, and then I started going with him every day, going to class, going to class every day. And the more I got into it, the more I, 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 I you know, I fell in love with it. You know, I was hurt, my shoulders, but I didn't. I didn't give a shit. I was like, I love this, and I spent a lot of years now, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. I started. It, yeah, de- it was, it's almost been twenty years. Twenty years. Yeah, oh, and then Fabiano gave me my blue belt, Fabiano Ija. Then I got my uh, my purple belt from Rico Rodriguez, and then uh, and then my brown belt after another seven years from uh, Rico Rodriguez again. Mm. And then uh, and then I've been training on and off. You know, I, if I got to work for a couple of months. You know, but I, you know, and now I started. I'm starting to come back, back just yeah. to you know, but uh, but this is real. You can't lie in there. You know, you 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 know, they see a big guy like me, and you see a little skinny dude, and and he's gonna he's gonna wrap me up. He's gonna fuck me up for sure, because this you know that's what matters in there. So like you have the you know of course like self defense fighting aspect right yeah. But yeah. what other what other things do you like do you love about jujitsu that makes you happy? Uh, jujitsu is just, uh, it's just, it just feels real to me, you know, cause the, the, the way I grew up, mm. Alberto, the way I grew up, I like, I like realness. You know, I could look into your eyes and be like, this guy's real. I like this guy. This is real. I like this. I want to learn this, you know? And, and, um, and I come here every day and I'm rolling, and I'm out of, and and I feel like I'm out of shape, like I can't breathe. And this guy's trying to kill me. You're fighting for your life. Mm. You gotta get out of that. You can't learn that anywhere else. You can't learn that anywhere else. You cannot lie in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. If somebody gives you a purple or brown belt, you have to you have to come in here and defend that every day. You don't want to get tapped by a white belt. So you know you have to come and defend it. And you gotta be real, you know. Yeah. And. Uh, but I just fell in, in love with all aspects of, of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. It's just incredible, you know. You, you know, and sometimes your body is just like my shoulders, my elbows, Tied your my pain, yeah. Yeah, yeah. My you, you see my ankles. I had a pinched nerve for like five years. I couldn't lift five pounds because I lost all the, my strength. And but you still come. You know, you want to train because you love this. You get better, your body gets healed, and then you bring this with you in real life. Like I tell my kids, jujitsu. I bring my all my kids are here. You see yeah, them, yeah, yeah. Valentina, Valentino. They all come here. Alexia, yeah, you brought and, them all uh, in. Yeah, I, and I tell them, I said, this will save your life one day, and you're gonna use Brazilian jujitsu every day in life. Mm. If you're at the office. If you're a nurse, if you're, you're gonna use Brazilian in your mind, you know, cause it's not just, it's like a chess game. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and you have to be smart. You have to know, you know, what your next move is gonna be. If this guy's got you wrapped up in this, how are you gonna get out of it? And then how are you gonna counter that? You're gonna use that in real life. Under a lot of stress, yeah, right? under a lot, it releases stress. It's just, you know, it's just, it, it, it will save your life. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu will save your life, I, I you know, Hands down, the best thing I ever done in my entire life, you know. And and, and you know, 
I, you know, I, I, I travel the world within, all over the place, and I met the biggest movie stars and, and all this stuff. But um, but to me, and, and where I came from, and to me, that wasn't a big accomplishment, to be honest with you. My biggest accomplishment, you know, is when Rico gave me my brown belt, when I got my purple belt, when I got my blue belt. You know, then I felt all that emotion in me. Like, you just want to cry because all the hard work, all the stuff, this is real. You know what I'm saying? Why does it mean so much? It just means so much to me because um, I just feel it in my heart. And and, and, um, and it just, you know, and I always think about, you know, I wish I knew this when I was little in the Dominican Republic, when I was in the ghetto. And when I was getting abused and when I was, so I could defend myself, when I was in a group home mm. and I was getting jumped and beat up and stuff like that. So, you know, to me, I, I'm doing it, but I'm almost, I, it's like, it's like I'm almost defending myself against them when, when I was little, like in my mind, you know what I'm saying? And I got to come here and I have to learn and I have to do this every day. Mm. My show, everything hurt, to, to, you know, and I was in the parking lot and t this morning. I was like, oh my gosh, should I, I was like, should I go into Sitting this? in the car. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, fuck. Debating. Yeah, I swear to God, I was in the car. I'm like, oh, fuck, man. Should I go in today? You know, because, you know, you're going to put, you're going to put yourself in a position of life and death. And you're going to defend you it. You say that. We had a, like a black belt psychologist and he, uh, I was like, man, why do, why do people that do jujitsu seem so young? And we were like, he was thinking about it. And he's like, you know, when you get older, everything's either in the past or the future. Yeah. Yeah. You're never really in the moment. When you're yeah. a kid, everything's in the moment. Everything's in the present. You yes. Know? Yeah. And so in a way, jujitsu brings you back to your childhood. And yeah. so when you say that, I'm like, yeah. you kind of are, you know, yeah. and you, you're yeah. able to face those fears, face those yeah. things, right. That happen yeah. to you yeah. and kind of. Recreate them, right? Yeah. So in my mind, every day I recreate it. Every day I come here. And you face it and kind of through that, you break through whatever yeah. nonsense, you know, that yeah. you made up and it makes you yeah. a better person. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. It makes you a way better person. You're just more humble. And, and it humbles you. Yeah. And it humbles you in a good way. In a good you way. You have to check your ego at the door. Yeah. There's no ego. If you come here, you, you know, like I used to say, oh, I'm not going to get tapped today. And I come in there and I got tapped. Everybody has a yeah. turn. Everybody has a yeah, turn. Yeah. Three, four times I got tapped. Like, oh, and it humbles now you. Now you're like, a, I'm going to call the police yeah, yeah. for you attempted murder. That. You saw that. This guy tried to kill me the other day. I said, you, and I told him, I said, you're going to get arrested. <laughs> Anthony, you're going to get arrested today. For, he goes, for what? I said, attempted murder. He tried to kill me. <laughs> it was crazy. You know what I'm saying? And But you have to, but that makes you better. Yeah. We can laugh about it, right? Yeah, and there's a trust yeah. too. You both of like course. trust. Yeah, you're so true. And then this guy becomes your your brothers. Yeah, you know this uh, this this thing you build with this guys. Uh, these guys are my brothers. Yeah, you know they try to kill every time you go at it. You literally go at it and try to kill each other, and then you shake hand and you hug him and you kiss him after after. Thank you, thank you. You know what I'm saying? And and you can't get that anywhere else. You know. But yeah, yeah that's true. why I love it. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I appreciate I appreciate all you give to, to all of us. You know, we're so yeah. generous and so yeah. big hearted and oh yeah. You know, I wanted to ask you one more thing. The Brazil, the Fast and Furious in Brazil. How oh was that? Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Without throwing anybody under the bus. Yeah, that was insane. Because we, Mori Batech was here and yeah, we were talking yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, it was yeah. like, I was like, uh, No, we had the best time in Brazil. We were there for two weeks filming. We went to the favelas. It was it was the most beautiful thing I ever seen. It was beautiful. It was incredible. Mm. We met a couple of Brazilian guys. This guy named Chico. This other guy. We went to the to train with them in the favela. It was his building, and the elevator would go up. Me and Vin went to the classes a couple of times, and um, and we trained there because we that's that's where Brazil comes. This is what you know. Yeah. It was born there. Yeah. And we went there and we trained there. Every day we were training with this guy. What a what a crazy crazy yeah. life, you know? Crazy crazy. Story. It was fucking amazing. With all the guys you were hanging out with down yeah. there, like oh the who's who of jujitsu yeah, and everybody. MMA, you know. Everybody who I mean, and then we would go to the to the beach to the um, the Copacabana beach, yeah, yeah. And they'll see Vin, and they'll just I mean, yeah. just like yeah. just surrounded because, and then Vin would show them love. Yeah, and yeah. Vin, it was just me and Vin walking around. You know, and we were just like like regular guys, no security, nothing. 
And VM would oh, just. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we, VM would just go into the crowd. Yeah, well, like anybody else, you know? And, uh, but we had a great time. The food was great. The people were, the Brazilian people were fucking amazing. Mm. Beautiful people, incredible. And, um, and then we film in the favelas, and uh, it was after, amazing. After we watched that episode, yeah, 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 we and we the, were the really there. Movie. We were filming for yeah. real in the favelas. Yeah, like when we went up there, we went up there in a couple of cars, but by the time we done, we were done. We couldn't get out of there. There were so many people, hundred thousands. The the police had to come up and escort Vin down from there. It was crazy. From the favela. From the favelas up there, yeah. I mean, it was insane. And the people, the, the children, the people in the street that would, I mean, it was just, it's just beautiful. It's beautiful. It's real. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. You feel the love, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, Brazil was incredible. And I travel all over the world with Vin, but uh, Brazil was literally one of the best countries I ever visited. It was incredible, beautiful. But uh, yeah, but you know, we're here, we're working, and uh, was, you know, what else? Like in the best do? out of uh, this, uh, this yeah, crazy yeah. times, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The pandemic and stuff, it, it's just, you know, it's just, uh, it's just crazy, you know, but uh, we gotta, and then, you know, and then the state tries to shut the gyms down. To, 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 this is what people live for. This one makes them healthy. Mm. This is what brings your immune system up. This is what, and then, and then, and people don't know this, the pandemic, a lot of people die just from depression. Yeah. Just being in the house alone, they're doing, you know what I'm saying? If you come to jujitsu or, or to a gym, you, your spirits is up. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it lifts your spirit. You know, you don't want to die. You don't want, yeah. you're not getting depressed. You don't want to be alone, you know? This Gives is your reasons to live, yeah, right? Yeah, this is the best thing in the world for that. Yeah. You know, it just keeps you healthy. Keeps you out, keeps you going, and your mind is somewhere else. You're not depressed. Yeah, you're not alone. You're not, you know. And if you do get hit with something, right, you're able to handle it. Yeah, you're able to handle it. Then you could rebound even faster if you get it. You know, your immune system and you're working out, yeah. and it, it just, you know, it's, it's just way better for you than just staying home yeah. by yourself. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Man, thank you so much for uh, for everything no. that you do for all yeah. of us. You yeah. know, yeah. thank I mean, you. Thank like I said, you. so yeah. generous, and you know, yeah. it's always always good times. You know, yeah, all, yeah. all the things that we either you, hey, you want to come? Okay, yeah. let's go. Yeah. No, 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 yeah. <laughs> These adventures yeah. you bring me on, you know. Yeah, yeah, so no, I course, appreciate you know no, I, I your humility to, always. Yeah, you know, and yeah. I think I, I want to thank you personally because I think you know you in a way you and your and your wife and your kids are, are like a beautiful family, and you and and you could feel that you helping people. You want to help people. Yeah. You're not just doing this for the more for this and that. You helping people. You know you like teaching life stuff that you're gonna use your whole life. You can't get this anywhere else. You know you you guys are like, it's like you know, and you guys save lives. To me, you guys save lives, bringing them here, taking care of them, and you and you always like, how are you guys doing? How's your family? How was this? How was that? And connection got, right we yeah. need that community yeah. we need that you know yeah, more than ever you know we have the social media and all these other things that yeah. don't really matter but this is as yeah. real this is real yeah this is real you guys are a family and you can feel it and i feel when i come here i feel like you guys are my family you guys are my family I, my daughters and my son i bring go bring them over to drop them off as soon as they go through that door i'm i feel safe mm. i can leave and come back in an hour that's my family, that's my house, that's, everything's gonna be, you know, I don't leave my kids with nobody. They come here, I, once they, I, I'm parked outside, as soon as you go in through that door, Valentino, Valentino, I'm good. I'll pick you guys up later. Cause you guys are my family, you guys are protecting, you know? Yeah. Everything is just, you guys are just, you guys are saving lives. You guys are doing incredible work for the community, for the town of Burbank, for everybody, you know? Thank you. If this school wasn't here, the, 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 you know, it, I hate to say it, this school wasn't here, a lot of people will be. Yeah, a lot of people in the entertainment yeah. industry, right? Yeah. They lost, you know, that's yeah. their, their whole way of life, right? Oh, yeah, 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 like, yeah. 
And so, yeah. Yeah. like, this place is the only place that <laughs> get them straight, you know, yeah. for them to make yeah. the right decisions for themselves yes. and their families. Yeah. You take this away, like yeah. you know, what do you you know what eat you eat bad and drink yeah. and who knows what and else? You know, stay in your house and you get more depressed, yeah, and sick, and then that's you know when. But and the kids on online on online school now, you yeah. know, oh like some God. kids, like yeah. man, that's the only social interaction that they have is like when they come in. Yeah, yeah. Now so I want to thank you, man. Ah, thank you thank for you. having thank us you. here. Thank, thank you, you for taking my family. Thank as you, as your family. Thank you. And, and you know, I am real. Recognize is real. I know real when I see it. That's why I come here, because everybody's real. Everybody's my family. My family, I feel safe when my family's here. So I want to thank you. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Look forward to yes. seeing you get your black belt. Oh my gosh, it's my dream. It's my dream, bro. It's my. Dr- I don't give a shit about anything. It's my dream to so get my black belt. Spread that good energy. That spread the love. Yeah, yeah. Help people. Yeah. For sure. Yes. Thank you. Man. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.